Thank you. Uh, so I wasn't wearing my translation headphones before I came up, so I had no idea what she just said. <laughs> I hope she was saying nice things about me. I have no clue. Um, it was funny, when I first found out that I was going to be doing this talk, uh, I told my parents, and the first thing that they said is, my mom said, why didn't you open your eyes for your photo? <laughs> and I was, <laughs> I was like, it doesn't matter that I'm flying to Czech Republic to speak. Um, but <laughs> I feel so thankful to be here today. Um, when the TEDx team contacted me and asked me to come and speak, my first reaction was, hell yes, of course I want to come to the Czech Republic. I've never had the pleasure of coming here before, and your country is beautiful. Um, but then secondly, and most importantly, when they said that the theme of these talks was all going to be around journey, that's when I knew that I needed to take part. Because journey is what I care deeply about and what my job and my career is all about. So I work for a company called Road Trip Nation. And so what Road Trip Nation does is it helps students explore what they're interested in and then how to connect their interests and what they're passionate about back into their education and into their lives. And so uh, I should say that the title of my talk is The More Difficult, The Better. And my talk has nothing to do with that. So I changed my whole presentation on the flight. Um, the team <laughs> was nice enough to uh, change all my slides. It's really intimidating with TEDx. They ask you to just condense down everything that you've learned and what's the one thing that you want people to take away. And so I put a lot of thought to it. And so what I actually want to talk to you guys about today is that in school and in education, we learn a lot about how to get to where we want to be, but we don't learn the why. And so what I want to talk about today is that it's not only important for us and for students to have the opportunity in their education to explore what they love and what they're passionate about, but that it's actually critical to their success both inside and outside of school. And so first I want to start with a little bit about what Road Trip Nation is and then talk about how I personally got connected to it and uh, how it plays a role in my story. And so Road Trip Nation started with three founders that graduated from college and had no idea what they want to do with their lives. <laughs> and so um, can I see a raise of hands of people that have no idea what they want to do or are still figuring it out or have no... Perfect. I'm going to pretend like everyone's hands raised because I can't really see because of the lights, but, um, but they graduated from college. <laughs> Nobody's hands are raised. Perfect. Okay. So you guys have all figured it out. This talk isn't for you. This is for other people that aren't quite as smart and don't know what they're going to do. Um, and so when they graduated from college and still had no clue, they felt like the best way that they could figure it out was to talk to other people that they really respected and admired and just sit down and have conversations with them to ask them, it seems like you have a life that you're really passionate about, you do work that you care about, and so how did you discover what that is and how did you overcome obstacles and what advice would you offer to our generation? And so on that first road trip, they bought a motorhome they painted it green and blue because those were the colors of paint that were on sale that day. Um, and they didn't have a plan, but they just knew that they wanted mentors in their life. And so they cold called people and they talked to the CEO of Starbucks. They talked to directors, producers. They also talked to a lobsterman off the coast of Maine. Um, and the common thread that connected these people is that they loved what they did. And so it didn't matter their status or their paycheck. They just wanted to ask them their advice as they were figuring it out. And so the founders did the first road trip and traveled across the country. And really early on, after that first trip, they realized that they didn't want it to be all about them and their story. They wanted to pass on the torch and allow other students to have that same opportunity and then share that content. And so now we film a documentary series on public television that shares all these stories. And I was one of the students that was lucky enough to go on one of the road trips. It's ongoing. And so I got to go out with a team of my friends and ask questions that were relevant to me. 
And at the time, I was really passionate about education and working with students, but I didn't really know what to do with that. I didn't know all of the options or career paths that were available to me. And so we set out on our road trip and we met with hundreds of people and just asked them those same questions. How did you get to where you are? What advice would you offer? Um, after that, I really wanted to work at Road Trip Nation, so I just stuck around and I begged and pleaded until they hired me. And so now I've been working there for seven years. And so my role at Road Trip Nation is an experienced architect. And thankfully at Road Trip Nation, they just allow us to make up our own roles. And so um, that's mine. And what that means is that I work with various companies and educational institutions through Road Trip Nation to help them design engaging events that allow students to, again, explore what they're passionate about and then equip them with the tools and resources to start pursuing that. And so what that actually looks like and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is I'm one of the filmers for the documentary series that we do. And so I was able to take my role and then change it into a mentorship role where then I go out with students on these trips and we interview these people and capture their stories. And so I want to show you guys some of the people that we've interviewed on my trip. And so uh, Jay Schaefer, he's an uh, environmental architect, uh, sustainability farmer, uh, CNN anchor, rocket scientist, Native American tribal chairman, uh, horse trainer, and even all the way up to the White House with a senior advisor to President Obama. And so, again, this is just a snapshot of some of the people, but the stories that they told us and what we asked about, it wasn't about how much money do you earn or what does your retirement plan look like? It was about what advice can you offer us that really goes beyond what your particular career is, but more so, how did you make those important decisions when you were at this crucial time in your life? And so what I want to do is play a short clip. Uh, the clip that I'm going to show you is with Christian Jacobs. So this is the first interview that I ever filmed, and so it has a special place in my heart. But I think it also gives a really good glimpse into these conversations. And TEDx is already doing such an amazing job of this as well. As you've seen the other speakers come up on stage and talk about what they've learned through their stories and struggles and triumphs, that's what we attempt to capture. And so with Christian Jacobs, we're going to jump in in the middle of this interview. And so Calvin, one of the road trippers that's uh, on this journey, is talking to Christian. And he just talked about how he just took out a large loan to start what is now a very successful children's uh, television show in the United States called Yo Gabba Gabba. But Calvin wants to know more behind that. How did he make those decisions? And so this is Christian Jacobs. So going back to that time where you had to take out loans, what was the dialogue like with your wife and with your friends, like, but especially your wife? Well, I, I, was working at a, I was working at a clothing company and right around the same time we started, you know, really, because we'd had this idea for a while, Yo Gabba, and I think it was just having the guts to go for it because we were getting older and I, you know, I just had my third child not me, but my wife had just had our third child, and it, it, things were getting, we just could feel like things were closing in on us. And while you're young, you can take chances, but once you get, you know, start having kids and you need to have a steady income, it's hard. It was tough. And talking to my wife about quitting my job and going for it, um, I think, and that, that's a testament to my wife. She's amazing, and she was very, she's very patient. I was scared, and but you know, we knew we had to just put it all in. This is it, <laughs> you know, all or nothing. Yeah, I'm definitely missing that like motivation in my life where I don't have a choice. Yeah. Well, let me see how to, I can phrase this. Cause I, when I graduated college, I moved back in with my parents uh -huh. and there's nothing like really motivating me to get out rather than, you know, sometimes it's like, okay, I don't want to live with my parents anymore. Right. But it's not like I have to move out or I have to take care of someone else. It's like, I have to get out when I make the decision. Yeah. And it's like, but I'm scared, so let me just like right. stay here. And <laughs> well, it's hey, like, you, you know, you, you bring up a good point. You bring up a good point. You got to put yourself in those sink or swim situations. You really do. 
that's what our culture is losing. We're losing the like, make things tough on yourself so that you're stronger. We're getting to the more oh, like, oh, that's too hard. Or, Convenience is the way to go, you know? No way, make it hard. Work at, at a production company and learn the ropes. But be ambitious, like don't just go home and watch Lost after you're done. Like stay up late and write a script and go, go sink or swim, you know? It really wasn't until like we, I had to, we had to do this or it was never gonna happen. And then it finally did. So you can see with Christian, he's just talking about a specific moment in his life, but how it relates to Vanessa and how she's struggling with taking those leaps of faith and really working hard and figuring out what it is she wants to do. And so that's just a snapshot, but we capture those stories so that we can then share it with students so they can start to get a glimpse into who they want to be and who they want to become. And so, uh, I don't know if you saw in the background, but Christian has a bunch of toys in the, the background of his office. And it's, he's definitely living his dream and it's amazing to see people like this. And so he has thousands of toys in his office and mostly it's because he said that his wife won't allow any of those at their house and so he has to bring them all to work. But it's also part of his inspiration. If you ever watched an episode of Yo Gabba Gabba, it's just insane and there's people jumping around and they're in costumes. And that's what he wanted to do is, he says this in his interview later, but he just wanted to have fun. And I know that's a lofty goal, but he created a space for himself to be able to have this dream career where he gets to create these crazy characters and have fun all day long. Uh, so the other part of my role at Road Trip Nation is that I travel across the country to high schools and colleges and put on these events and have conversations with students to again help them discover what it is that they love and then give them the resources to then start pursuing that. Um, so I just have some stats up on the screen, but I've vlogged uh, 36,000 miles, uh, over 100 interviews, 350 schools, and uh, 87,000 students. And so the reason that I bring that up is leading into this next slide, which is Andrew Galarza. So he's a student that I worked with in the Bronx in New York. And the reason that I chose uh, Andrew to highlight was not that he was unique, but actually the opposite. That his story was one that I had heard thousands of times, but I think is really important and relevant to share. And so when I was talking to Andrew about what he wants to do after he graduates from high school, he said, I have no idea what's after this. It's all a big blah to me. And I hear this so many times from students that have no idea where they want to go. They have no motivation because they don't know what their goal is. And it's not their fault, but a lot of times students like Andrew, we work with a lot of at-risk and low-income communities that don't have opportunities to go on these cross-country road trips and see all these different opportunities. And so we take it upon ourselves to bring this content into the classroom so that we can share it. So what I want to do now is take some of these snapshots from the road and then bring it together with some of the work that's been done and studies in the educational space. And so the first is with uh, Angela Lee Duxworth. So she gave a TED talk about grit. And the thing that really struck me with this is Angela was first a teacher that then became a psychologist. And she was so fascinated in the classroom because she had students that ranked really high on IQ and intelligence but that didn't do so well in class. And then she had other students that may not have ranked as high, but that outperformed these other students. And so she was really curious about what makes students successful. And so they did a massive study. She went into the field of psychology and what they found was grit, determination. That was the overarching number one indicator of success, that people, whether they were students or in the military or in a professional setting, it was that grit and determination that carried them through. And so it took me back to that conversation with Andrew where how can we expect students to do all the work to get them through school if they don't know where they're going or who they want to become? Um, 
Because I'm out of time, I'm just going to jump to the conclusion, which is that if we can provide students, and I believe it goes beyond education to our personal lives, but if we can provide opportunities to step out of our comfort zones and get, whether it's doing a road trip across the nation or just across the street, talking with mentors and hearing these stories, that opens us up to finding who we want to become. And then if we find who we want to become and we allow those opportunities for students, then the grit and determination will follow so that they can become who they dream to be. Thank you guys so much.